Hi, I'm John DeArmond with the Coquille Valley Sword Group, and today we're talking about Article 7, Closing the Distance. So, let's begin. Article 7, Closing the Distance. There are various teachings to the choice of distance to the opponent in other schools. Because people are inclined to be entangled by one strategic teaching or the other, and thereby become immovable in their spirit, I prefer to say nothing particular about this now. Such things become easily understandable by themselves in various ways when we get used to them. Simply put, you should take care that the distance in which you can hit the opponent with your sword is at the same time the distance in which you can be hit by the sword of the opponent. When attacking the opponent, people tend to forget their own body. This should be thoroughly tried out. So, um, just like in the last one, we have the comparison to kind of the, the current paradigm and other schools, and then he immediately sort of breaks out and says, or rather implies that uh, that's not so much what we're doing here. Um, in fact, he basically just says that we're not going to really talk about it in depth. Um, so this is, uh, this is interesting because this is the first time where he says, where he even implies that, hey, there is like a better way to do this, but we're, we're not going to talk about it because the general understanding is more, uh, more expedient at this time, at the sort of the beginner level. Um, which, of course, is not to say that we do not have uh, m methods and strategies involving uh, distance, uh, distance to the opponent, um, like Arms of the Autumn Monkey, for instance. Uh, but he wants to kind of wait to go into that. Uh, and kind of the, the, the thing to focus on here is why. Why not just say, okay, well, we, we, we've talked about foot movement, we've talked about hand holding, we've talked about posture and gaze, you know, why not just say, okay, and this is distance, right? And he lays it out because people basically want to get uh, wrapped up in one strategy, one method. In other words, uh, one distance in combat. They think, okay, well, uh, like for hand-to-hand -hand fighting, I'm a grappler. I want to be at, at clinch distance or on the ground. Or... I'm a striker, I want to be at, at, at striking, kicking distance, or whatever, right? They have their box that they're comfortable in, and that's where they work. And Musashi's basically saying, that's cool and all, but it's not adaptable. In other words, you know, you can watch that, that striker all day long until some, you know, uh, wrestler or, or, or grappler comes up to him, puts him in a clinch, and puts him on the ground fighter doesn't know how to work in that clinch distance efficiently and uh, not in a way that can protect themselves against the work right so Musashi is basically saying it is more important to be adaptable than specialized right and this is again one of those reoccurring themes in our school in our strategy um, fancy techniques are nice and all and they have their place but you shouldn't worry about them until after you really have a solid hold on the basics. Uh, because basics win fights, special techniques win, like, moments, instances, right? You, you get it or you don't. <laughs> okay, so... Well, this is a section on distance. What does he have to say about it? He says, okay, I'm not going to talk about it because it's so freaking simple that you'll come to understand it in lots of different ways as you train and work. You know, basically, familiarity breeds competence in terms of distance. And this is very true. Um, because, at least in, in our style, we recognize that... Uh, in addition to all of the sort of uh, commonly understood tactical factors, right? Uh, position, distance, timing, relationship to the opponent, um, 
environmental conditions, all that kind of thing, that tools being used, there is this other major element that um, while many combative styles will focus it on the enemy, they rarely turn that in on themselves. And that is psychology, right? That is the mental state of the practitioner. We do a lot with manipulating the opponent's psychology, and Musashi says, hey, if it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. So what we're going to do is not really lay it out so much, right? Because maybe I'm the type of person who is uh, really reticent really cautious, right? And I want to fight far out. I want to take that center guard, whether it's, it's Chudan or Mojiri, and I want to, I want to really make this do work for every inch of ground. Or, you know, maybe I'm the kind of guy who, who is just, you know, wah, and really going for it. I'll take that high guard or, or, or maybe like Kasumi no Kamai or something, and I will, boom, and drive in and take the two. You know, they're different distances, and you know, if you tried to use one in the other, you would have uh, trouble, right? Because you can't leverage the strength of uh, the Kamai, right? The Kamai of your body, the Kamai of your heart, right? Um, so, so play with it. Um, what's additionally good about this is he's, he's not saying, hey, I am the great Musashi, and I am here to tell you exactly how it's got to be, right? Uh, and you're just going to, you're just going to accept that, and that's that. You know, this whole, to understand it, you have to train thing that uh, is, is a hallmark of Musashi strategy comes down to not just to gain a functional understanding of an action, you have to actually participate in it, especially when it's, you know, so kinetic, right? But also that you have to vet the concepts for yourself, right? And it's not to say, uh, well, the concepts work for some people and they don't work for others. It's to say that uh, people are more effective when they have faith in themselves and their work, rather than faith in some, you know, two, three hundred year old dead guy, right? Yeah, it, Musashi, great, wonderful, beat lots of people, hoop to do, great. He trained, you know, several people that went on to become great in their own right. Well, that's that's nice. That's then. This is now, and there's always that sort of. Uh, unsurety. It almost like feeling sorry for yourself. It goes, well, that worked for them, but, you know, it's a new and magic time, so, you know, it's not going to be applicable. And for sure, some things have less utility. For instance, swinging a sword, right? Not a lot of uh, modern utility of that in, uh, you know, sort of commonplace self-defense or military work or, or anything, because we're just going to use them. Um, that doesn't mean that how you swing the sword magically, like, stops injuring the dude, stops controlling him, stops accomplishing what the technique was designed to do, right? Um, so test it out, find it out for yourself in the situation that... Uh, it's it's designed for because people tend to I'm going to go off on a, a rant here people tend to, to uh, think that all uh, interpersonal physical conflict between people is one thing is fighting right this is fighting and it is all the same um, and that's it's simply not the case right that's like saying the all driving is the same, right? You're in a car, you're going places, all driving is the same, right? So to decide who, whose way of driving is the best, we're going to put them on a NASCAR track, right? Well, that might be great if you're NASCAR, if you're, you're performance-driven, you're, you're an athlete in that way, but 
those off-road guys, you know, go bouldering and they're 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 jeeps and Suzuki Samurais and all that. Uh, they're obviously not going to do well in that. And so, if they start to change the way they do their work to be more successful in this other venue, it's not going to to actually get them where they want, you know, down the path to their goal, right? Does it make sense? It should. Um, I can give a, a good practical example of this in in fighting, right? So in uh, several systems, especially ones that focus on self-defense, there is an additional range in combat. In other words, normally there is out of range, kind of long range, you know, kicking and punching, and they're kind of real close together. People usually just lump them into striking. Then there's clinching, and then there's on the ground, right? For these self-defense folk, there is a range between striking and clinching. Uh, a lot of people call it entanglement. Um, you see a good example of this is the uh, the chi sao work of Wing Chun, uh, the sticky hands, right? Right. It's at that entanglement distance. Uh, same thing with most uh, uh, like of the the IDFs, uh, Krav Magas. Uh, weapon disarms, gun defenses, that kind of thing, right? They're at that entanglement distance. Now, that distance in self-defense gives you a lot of advantage over your opponent. It, it, it lets you better leverage your strength while putting the opponent at a disadvantage, uh, both because of familiarity and because of uh, relation mechanics, right? Um, so it's not a constant. In other words, uh, it's not a constant. If you know how to use the range, you get an advantage, basically. Uh, and it's it's powerful. So a lot of styles spend a lot of time at this range. Well, UFC comes out, and these guys who are used to fighting in this range go into the cage, and they go, okay, yeah, I'm going to do this. And they go against, you know, Thai guys or, or, or American boxers or, or the Brazilians, and they find out that they are just getting stuffed in this range, right? Strikers control the distance and fight at the distance that they're comfortable, not letting them get into that entanglement range. And the grapplers just come in and clinch up, right? Bring them to the ground and do their work. And everyone's like, oh my gosh, this range, it doesn't work. It's, it's a myth. It's a thing that doesn't really happen. It's like, well, you can say that, but it's not accurate, right? It would be more accurate to say in the competitive environment of one-on-one -on -one ring fighting against somebody who is a competitive fighter. And some people get kind of uh, sensitive about this kind of subject because they're saying like, oh, you're trying to defend these arts that are that are bullshit, that don't work, blah, 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 blah. Or you're trying to, to grade the, the, the fighting sports, the combat sports, and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, I'm not doing it either, right? That the, an art has to stand or fall on its own. Uh, uh, I'm just pointing out that they should be viewed in the context of their intended application, right? Wing Chun was always a self-defense system, right? And it has a long, long history of success. And to go, oh, well, because we've had, what, 11 years with a cage and it doesn't work real great there means that, you know, all of that history means nothing, and oh, well, that was then, this is now, we've got like space age fighting, right? Is, uh, it, it's, it's reductive, at least. Um, in the same way, people that look at the fight sports and go, hey, you know, that's not fighting, you couldn't use to protect your, that to protect yourself, I'm gonna gouge your eyes and kick you in the balls and blah, 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 blah. It's like, okay, That's, that's not really uh, accurate either, because clearly these people are beasts, right? They are freaking athletes in their sport. And this isn't like, uh, this isn't like other sports where it's like, oh, you might sustain an injury. You might sustain a, a serious injury in your career. Uh, if, if you're in a fighting sport, you will get hurt and you will get hurt 
badly. And it, it's basically guaranteed. It's just time, right? Well, that means they're stupid. It's like, no, it just means that they like what they like, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. But it also means that in their mind, they have done that risk reward and gone, yeah, serious injury sucks, but the reward is greater and I am willing to accept that injury, right? That kind of dedication is not something that you're going to find at your McDojo in the strip mall. It's, it's just not. Most people don't want to work hard for something that is going to bring them discomfort, right? It's, uh, so, you know, you, you got to give people their due and view them in their, their context. Uh, so I wouldn't take Tai Chi to the ring and I would not utilize, like, here's the thing. Self-defense doesn't work really good in the ring. But the stuff from MMA is, a, is an incredibly good foundation for self-defense work because these guys are basically going out and trying to beat another human being that is highly skilled and, you know, not really physically out of shape except for those weird fights, uh, beat them into submission one way or another. That, that's a, that is not something to turn your nose up at. But it's also a mistake to think of it as the be-all, end-all, right? Um, you know, and it's just like anything, it's about what you train. Everyone will say, oh, I can, I can poke your eyes, I can grab your balls, blah, 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 blah. It's like, well, you could, but you probably won't because humans are gregarious and in most conflicts, we're not looking to maim our opponent. We might really dislike that guy. We might get in this fight with some traffic dude because we're retarded and we might start beating on him, but we're not looking to ruin his life. We're not looking to kill him. All we're looking for is to establish dominance hierarchy, right? Is basic mammalian. I'm better than you. I have just proved it. You must acquiesce to my, my position, right? Um, and it takes a lot to override that communal herd uh, mentality. Uh, now, this is why working against weapons is really difficult because it's very easy with a weapon to grievously injure somebody on accident. Uh, and you might think, dude had a knife, he stabbed at me, it's not a freaking accident. It's like, yes and no, right? What he physically did and, and where he's sort of mentally at is a different thing. But with hand to hand work, it's uh, it's it's pretty easy to not horribly maim a human being, right? Um, and anybody who's in an art that that involves actually striking your partner will understand that. People come in off the street, they start hitting, and it's shallow, right? Bam! It might be fast, it might be explosive, but there's no depth to it, right? Whereas seasoned fighters who have worked through their 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 uh, sociability <laughs> drive with depth and uh, weightedness, right? Boom. So it's uh, just because a lot of people don't do it doesn't mean it can't be done. It just means that in the instant they decide not to do it. Now, this is the, the eye gouging and the, the, the crotch kicking are just uh, sort of the commonplace examples. Uh, in, uh, in the Russian work in Sistema, we do uh, standing joint breaks, right? Dynamic joint breaks. The guy punches and you break his arm, right? Just boom, full speed, full fight speed. You know, it, it's like a cross in terms of uh, time it takes to execute. And you can catch it real quick, real easy. Now, this is something that obviously has no place in a competitive sports environment. None at all, right? 
if if some guy comes, if you're if you get in a cage and the dude, right? Yeah, you know you're 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 beating on him, but uh, and it's not always, you know, you you always get your like clique of douchebags that are just out the dominance hierarchy, prove their manliness to you, right? But most of the guys that do that, they've been beat enough that they know that they can be beat, right? And that really cuts your ego down. And so what they're doing is they're trying to establish, yeah, I am better than what I thought I was, right? They're, they're just trying to get an accurate view of their skill level. And once they have that, to drive that upwards, like any professional athlete would. Um, and if some dude comes in and just starts breaking people's elbows and, and knees, you know, and it, it, it wouldn't fly, right? And you know this because you can watch... Uh, the jiu-jitsu guys doing their submissions. They don't just pop back in that arm bar and snap the dude's elbow back. They get it, they put it on, and it's safe-ish, right? They're, there's, they're in a mechanical position where they could break it without trying. Or, well, they could break it easily. Um, but they choose not to because sports have sportsmanship, right? It's, it's a solidarity. So people that think that uh, combat sports don't equate to self-defense, you, you're wrong. I mean, it's, 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 it's not a subjective uh, idea. It, it's factually incorrect. People who think that MMA is all there is to self-defense and that sort of self-defense systems don't have anything that's specialized for the venue that they work on, are wrong, right? It's it's just it's ignorant, um, and it's it's again it's the good parts about gregarious nature and bad parts, right? Bad parts. Oh, I have my team. I have my camp. I have my family members that I roll with. Oh, I have my team. I have my camp. I have you know the, the in depth whatever that we do, right? Oh, my team's better than your team, right? Which team is better? Who has the dominance hierarchy? So. Uh, don't get caught in it, right? It's just, just step outside of it. Let people do what they want to do and realize that you're not letting them. They're going to do it. You have no say over it. Just drop your ego, step away from it, right? So I'm going to get off my soapbox now. <laughs> and we'll try and close the distance on this article, right? So... You understand distance through familiarity. You understand your work through familiarity and practicing it. Where do we where do we end this? Right? It says, hey, the main point to remember here, the main thing that's important is that if you can hit the dude, he can hit you. Right? Unless you have you have way better relationship on him, right? Um, and that you should remember this. Why? Because when people work, um, even sort of intermediate skilled people will do this. They'll strike at you, or or, or they'll go for a takedown, or or, or they'll they'll try and, and and cut at you, and their mind will exist solely in the object in motion. Um, what do I mean by that? This sounds sort of like esoteric, and it's not. It's uh, their focus. You know what what they're paying attention to, what they are uh, meticulously forming and controlling and observing and sort of uh, adjusting, right? So they strike, wah, and you'll see it time and time again. People will take these strikes and whoop, and their whole posture will will be like a comet tail, wee, stretching out behind this thing. And in the, uh, the, the in your paradigm, right? You'll, you'll have your you'll, right? Your, your yang, your son, your oh, get it done, right? And then you'll have your in, or your, your yin, your, your shadow, right? Uh, your weakness, right? The area of your body that is not projective, but absorptive, right? And this is, while most martial arts don't frame it in this sort of dualistic context, 
anybody that does any sort of striking understands this simple fact. When a person strikes, nine times out of ten, the weakest place on their body is wherever that strike originated, right? Because it is most empty, right? Bam. And you learn to hit that, and you just start stuffing the guy. Um, and like a dog, you train him. Oh, every time you stick that out, you get hurt. And suddenly, they stop sticking it out, right? And that's, you're breaking down their will to fight. Um, What's interesting about this is in almost all of the other sections, he says, hey, you know, I can, I can only tell you so much, you gotta go train with this to do it. But in here, he says, this should be thoroughly tried out, right? What does that mean, right? Why, why the different wording and, and why going at it? Because Musashi's method is not passive. It is, it is fundamentally active, like in motion against the dude. Just drive, 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 drive. Control, drive, right? So what he's saying here is, you know, what you need to protect yourself from is, is not leaving your body behind, right? Of not, not leaving it uh, mindless, right? But to work with a full body and to be mindful of the danger the other person imposes on you. Because, here's this weakness. Now that you know this is a weakness, when people attack their vulnerable, you should go try that out, right? He's telling you, work your partners, watch their movements, right? You start to be able to pick up on this, and this is where we start getting into uh, both work similar to like uh, the, the Chinese cutting the road, Right, the stop hits, boom, where you strike their attack and and sort of smother it. Um, but it also leads into hitting in the half beam, um, which, although very simple, is, is uh, it, it's quite tricky in the beginning to do consistently because we have rhythm so deeply ingrained into into our beating right we we, we are a rhythm machine um, anyway so what's important is to try it out so that you start to understand distances right if you can hit them they can hit you If they're trying to hit you, you can hit them, right? And this is basically Article 7. So, as always, um, if you want to understand this, you got to pick up a sword, go train.